Okay, now we're back. I'm going to show you a thermal conductivity lab that we do. It's a very, very interesting. You can come up here, zoom in. I have a steam generator here. It's going to produce hot water and the steam is going to come. The steam is going to come from the side. It's going to fill in this chamber and the steam is going to start making this chamber hot and the, and the heat is going to flow to the outside from all directions. And I have a certain material here and we could put different materials in that, okay? Over here, we have different pieces of wood, we have plastic, we have glass. Right now, I have wood in there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a block of ice, which is sort of at about zero degrees Celsius. I'm gonna turn the block of ice like this, put it here, and the steam as it goes through the wood is gonna produce heat that's penetrating through here, and the ice is gonna start to melt. And as the ice melts, it's going to collect in here, okay? I'm going to put it over here. This one is here so that it can collect the extra steam that uh, condenses back into water. But what I'm interested in is how much ice collects over here. So what is this equa uh, what equation is this testing? AA delta T over delta X. Power is how much heat is flowing per unit time. K is the heat conductivity of the material. A is the cross-sectional surface area. Change in temperature is the difference of the two temperatures. Delta X is the thickness D, okay? So if I want to calculate the conductivity of a material, I go P times the delta X over area times delta T. P is how much heat flowed per unit time, right? Power is how much heat flowed per unit time. A is surface area, this is change in temperature, this is the thickness, or I could just call it D, okay? Now, how do I measure how much heat flowed? Well, if I actually have ice here, and I'm melting the ice, how much heat flowed? Well, if the, the heat is how much uh, ice I melted, mass of ice, I melted times the heat of fusion of ice. So the basic concept of the lab is measure how much ice you melted, how much ice you collected that would that turned into water, multiply by heat of fusion times D divided by the time, divided by surface area, divided by delta T. Okay? So you can put as much material as you want there and go in depth and do the, the lab. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna get this running. I'm gonna measure my initial uh, mass of the beaker, okay? 67.1 grams, okay? So let's write it here somewhere on the side. 67.1 grams, this is beaker by itself. Then I'm gonna time it for five minutes. I'm gonna let the steam go through for five minutes and then I have wood here as my insulator, okay? Okay, actually let's, let's make sure that the ice has not already melted. So let me dump some of the water that has been collecting there, okay? Because you want to make sure when you're doing this that you're not getting the water that was already melted in there. So you want to dump all the, all the water out. Okay. Then you want to get this in. You want to have it touching the surface. Then I'm going to start my timer. Okay, so now the water has been collecting for five minutes. Let me turn it off. Make sure I get all the melted ice in there. Okay. So you just have to make sure the tricky part here is make sure you collect here without burning yourself. Okay. As much of the ice as you can. OK, 
Okay, so let's weigh it. 84.9. Okay, so 84.9. So how many grams of ice did I melt? So subtract them. 8 point, and then here of course 14 minus 7, 7, 7, 1. 17.1 grams of ice. Now, if I use a better material that conducts heat better, what's going to happen? More ice is going to melt, right? If I uh, put a material that doesn't conduct heat as well, then less ice is going to melt. So that means it's a better insulator. If it's a, so if it's a good conductor, it means it's a bad insulator. If it's a bad conductor, good conductor of heat, good conductor of heat means the K is high. Okay? That means it's a poor insulator. Bad conductor of heat, K is low, that means it's good insulator. Okay? Same thing goes true for electrical insulation and electrical conductivity. The material, on, this time I'm going to use glass. Okay. Okay. Glass should conduct heat better. That means it's a worse insulator, poor insulator compared to wood. Then we could compare other materials, of course, and make a whole lab out of this. So let me change the material now. Okay. To change the material, you loosen this. Okay. Let me get some towels. Uh, pretty hot in here. So now you're going to slide this down, slide this down, okay, it kind of makes a tight air gap, then you're going to put this here, tighten the two edges, you see the water is already going, right, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it and then start timing from now. Okay? So, where's my timer? So, five minutes. And then we'll be back five minutes later and see what the result of this is. Okay. Okay, so now we've been heating the glass through the gra uh, glass for five minutes. So, let's collect all the water. Again, okay, tilt this, get all the water we can, okay, now weigh it. Now you can visually see a lot more ice has been melted, so glass is a better conductor of heat. So we weigh it. 132, 132 grams, the beaker alone was 67.1, so let's just say for the sake of argument just 67, so 15 to 6, that's it, 65 grams of ice was melted. Now through the, uh, when we use the wood, about 18 grams of ice was melted. So wood, uh, glass. If I take the ratio of the two, it's roughly about, what? Uh, if I divide 65 by 18, about four, right? Three to four. Um, so that means glass is a three to four times better conductor of heat than wood is. And now I can compare other materials and stuff. I can go more detail. So you can see how we can study the conductivities of different materials with this lab. Thank you.